on planet Earth to establish a presence in our solar system. You know, and having the capability to do that with uh, SLS and Orion, that's amazing. And we can't make that happen unless we enable commercial operations and commercial crew to uh, lower Earth orbit to the International uh, Space Station. Uh, that's critical. That enables us, allows NASA to explore beyond our own planet. So I'm really looking forward to that SLS flight. I'm really looking forward to having crew on it and, uh, and getting beyond planet Earth again. Uh, what would be your response to Buzz Aldrin's statement that landing humans on an asteroid is more of a distraction to the real mission, the mission to Mars? Uh, how much value, value is it in splitting the budget between the two? So what we're developing is a capability-based architecture. It's not uh, destination specific or time specific. It allows us to go anywhere. And in order to go beyond planet Earth, we need a big rocket, we need a crew vehicle. And we're developing those. Once those are developed, you know, that will free up DTE money to allow us to develop a habitability module, which will allow us to develop a lander. So, you know, what we're doing, it's not administration specific, it's specific to allowing us to have the capability to explore beyond planet Earth. So it's an architecture that we're developing that, that allows us to go anywhere. And I think that's pretty darn cool. There was one back, yeah. So as a former astronaut yourself, you wish that you could go on the mission tomorrow. I'd go on a heartbeat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you know I walked out of the movie The Martian, and I said, "Man, that's it! I want to make that happen for real." <laughs> it, except for that part about leaving. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring them home. But um, you know, one of the challenges is radiation on a on a mission to Mars. And I said, "Shoot, I'm old." You know, uh, I'm more radiation. It's okay. You know, I'll probably die before I get cancer anyway. You know. And, but, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think that would be awesome to be able to, uh, to uh, leave planet Earth and go to, to Mars and explore and come home again. What, what an opportunity that's going to be for somebody. I mean, we're all explorers at heart, aren't we? I mean, we've been exploring, you know, since the beginning of time. What's over that next hill? And, uh, you know, setting robots out is really important, you know, to learn and prepare for uh, humans. But I, I believe you got to put a human there to uh, to really experience it and, uh, and make it happen. So yeah, I'm ready to go. The other, you know, when I saw that movie, remember that scene where the, they show the outside of the spaceship coming back from Mars, that huge thing with the uh, rotation, so you got gravity and everything. And uh, you know they're in the gym <laughs> and they got these huge windows and they're running on a treadmill and they got all that exercise equipment. I'm saying, I want that space. <laughs> that's a spaceship. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go again. Absolutely. Yeah. I can still pass it. Is it helpful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just as social media troublemakers, I, I was wondering what, in your view, could people like us do to best advocate to make sure you guys get the political support and funding support that you need I, to do your cool things. I think you're doing it. It's communicating to folks, you know, you guys have huge followings out there in cyberspace, right? And uh, not everybody has the opportunity to be you here seeing this stuff firsthand. And your ability to communicate it through pictures and words and share that with other people and show our success and show our progress I think that's awesome. You, get, you guys just keep doing what you're doing. All right, last one. With, with all the discoveries that you guys have had with, with Pluto with water, things like that, how, how close do you think we are to, to finding some form of life? Well, you know, that's, that's a great question. I don't know how close we are to finding uh, life out there. Do I believe there's life out there? I, I absolutely do. Mathematically, uh, you know, hey, look at, again, Hubble. One of my favorite pictures of Hubble is the Hubble Deep Field. And go out some night, and you know, you got the Big Dipper, right? And put your hand up there where there's no stars, hold it like this, and look at your little fingernail. That's the Hubble Deep Field. And what did they find? Not, not just hundreds of stars, but hundreds of galaxies, you know, in that, in that place full of stars. So to think, and Kepler's found it also. There are planets that, you know, are probably in the Goldilocks zone, not too close, not too far from a star out there that could be similar to Earth. But in an infinite universe that God created, to think that we're the only planet that could sustain intelligent life, 
that's pretty vain of us. And I, I really believe that just mathematically, odds are there are other planets out there that could have life on them. They're just so far away, you know, uh, contact uh, becomes hard. But, you know, someday down the road, you probably find some way of connecting with somebody. I mean, look how long it takes for light to travel. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's uh, That's the neat thing about exploration. In science you don't know what you don't know and uh, finding that out that's pretty neat but look at how much we have learned look how technology has taken off exponentially the last few years look at how knowledge and, and everything that we've learned about you know our universe has grown in the last uh, 10 to 20 years and it's only going to continue and I think that's pretty cool all right, I'll let you guys get to touring. Uh, thanks for coming. Thank you. I think, you. We're, I think Thank you. we're going to see some really neat stuff today. Uh, share it all. And somewhere in there, I'm going to tweet you guys out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.